Now on this channel, I've talked about a bunch of different ways that you can easily cut out things in Photoshop to remove their background and put them into other images. But one of the tools I wanted to focus on today is the object selection tool. Now, if you're totally new to this tool, this video is gonna share everything you need to know. But if you're already familiar with this tool, make sure to stay tuned because there's gonna be some really helpful golden nuggets of information in here that are gonna improve the way you use this tool. So here in Photoshop, to find the object removal tool, it is likely underneath the quick selection tool. So if you see the quick selection tool, just click and hold and then go to object selection tool. Now, if you do not see the tool here at all, then that means it's hidden in a different area. So you have to add it to your toolbar. To do that, click right down here and go to edit toolbar. This window will come up and if the object selection tool was not available up here, you'll see it in this extra tools column here. So extra tools, object selection tool. Now to make life easy, since it is the W keyboard shortcut, you'll wanna put it with the other W. So the quick selection and the magic wand tool. I'll click and drag this over, put it underneath my quick selection tool like so click done and then now you'll find that tool right here now once you have this tool selected you have a few different settings to choose from up in the upper bar here the first option you have is the mode here you have a rectangle or a lasso type selection we're going to go through both in this tutorial and what they are but for now we'll just stick with the rectangle then you have these options right here which basically allow you to choose what type of selection you're going to be creating since you generally are creating a new selection, make sure that this option with a single square is selected as that is the new selection option. Now we also wanna make sure that the object subtract and the enhance edge is selected because that will help us make the selection process a little bit easier. So now how do you actually make a selection with this tool? We're gonna to select the layer that we want to draw a selection from. If you have the sample all layers option, things will get confusing if you have say another shape over your subject or something like that, it will go and take that into account as well. But with this sample all layers unchecked, you'll only be creating a selection based off of the edges in your selected layer. So once again, with this image layer selected, I'm gonna click and drag out and it looks a lot like the marquee tool, but what we see here is the general area of where our object selection tool will begin to look for edges. Everything inside of this selection will be considered for an edge to snap onto. In this case, since we have our runner against a clear blue sky, he stands out pretty nicely, it should do a good job. So once I let go here, look what happens. Now that rectangular selection has snapped onto our subject and it has done a pretty good job to select most of our person here. So this did a decent job, but obviously it's gonna need some touching up. Now in some cases, if you have a perfectly clean background, say a product image against a white background, this tool will do a great job just to quickly pick out the edges that you need. But when there's something a little bit more complex like this, where his legs sort of blend in with the yellows of the grass, it might get a little bit confused. Luckily, you can refer find this using two simple keyboard shortcuts. Now, before I share these two keyboard shortcuts and get into the lasso tool, make sure to hit that like button down below if you're enjoying this tutorial so far. It helps more people see this video and supports this channel. Thank you so much. Let's get back into it. Okay, so you have two different options here. The first is to add to your selection and the second is to subtract. So let's first talk about adding. In situations like up on his head here where it's selecting part of his head but just miss the front part here, that means we want to add onto our selection. So to add onto a selection, if you hold the shift key, notice how I now have a little plus icon beside my cursor. You can also just click this icon right here because it does the same thing. If I look up here, hold the shift key, it goes to that specific option there. Holding the shift key, I'll click and drag over the area I want to extend my selection to like so and now it will just snap onto the edge because when Photoshop has a smaller area to consider the edges in, it will do a better job than when you just had the giant marquee selection like we did at the beginning. Now, likewise with this circle here, I'll just go and select it completely and that's just going to get rid of it for me. So now we have a good selection around his head and his elbow will do the same thing, just a small one because the smaller your potential selection area is, the better Photoshop will do at finding the right edges. So let's just quickly go through here, holding the shift key just to quickly extend the selection into the areas that it should be. So now after just a few easy refinements here, we've gone and 
added on any additional areas that we need in our selection. Now we need to go through and subtract from our selection. So go and deal with these areas that are overextended or over selected. In this case, it's selecting the grass and not nicely against his leg. So rather than holding the shift key, this time we're gonna hold alt or option. And now notice how I have a little minus icon beside my cursor. Alternatively, you can click on this option right here, but the alt or option key is much faster for this. So holding alter option, now once again, we're gonna go and make a selection or a marquee selection around this area. And now Photoshop will find the edge that you want to refine to. Since I don't want that little circle there, I'll just completely surround it. And then it's gone completely for me. Now let's just go and repeat this process a few different times around my photo until everything that we're looking for is selected. So now our selection is looking pretty good, but we just have to pick out this one little area in his arm. Now this part might be a little bit confusing because it's not near any of the edges of your selection. It's sort of in the middle of everything. Well, the easiest way to think about this is that everything inside of these marching ants is a part of your selection. So since we wanna get rid of this, that means we need to subtract from our selection holding the Alt or Option key. Holding Alt or Option, I'm gonna just go and select around his arm here, like that. And now that will create a selection in this specific area that will basically just cut out the sky from that part of the photo. So now with everything in order, we can go and cut out our image just by adding it to a layer mask, clicking the layer mask icon, and now our photo is successfully cut out. Now with this example, we just went through with our mode set to rectangle. So we were basically just dealing with a marquee selection over and over again to refine our edge. But like you learned earlier at the start of this video, there is the lasso option here. But I wanna go back and show you a few situations where it would be a lot more advantageous to use the lasso mode instead of the rectangle mode. So let's just delete this layer mask and start fresh, this time using the lasso mode. So setting our mode to lasso, this time it works just like the lasso tool, which I have a tutorial all about, you can find in the corner right now if you're interested. But how this tool works is that you just click and drag around your subject and this line that you create will basically create the parameters for what your selection area will be. So like last time, how we made the big rectangle around our subject, this time we just draw a big line around our subject and everything inside of that line will be considered for the selection. Now notice how it has done a good job just to quickly link everything to the edges of our person and zooming in, it did a little bit of a better job on his head, it did a better job around his arms and things like that. So the lasso mode is really helpful when you have to deal with lots of curves and bends like we have in this runner photo. Now, just like before, we can hold the shift key and then just click and drag around an area to make a lasso selection, holding the shift key still, and then that's going to add on to our selection just like it did before. We can go and do that over a few different spots and the beauty of the lasso mode is that you can make this even more refined. So if Photoshop was having a hard time selecting the exact edge that you were looking for while in the rectangle mode, the lasso mode makes it easier to really isolate that one edge. Let me give you an example of this. Right around his knee here, if I go and set the mode to rectangle, I can hold the shift key and go and add to the selection like so. Holding that shift key, letting go. Notice how much extra area I had selected. And because of that, it had taken into consideration some of the bushes and just made our selection worse. Let's go and try that again, this time with the lasso mode. Clicking on the lasso mode, holding the shift key to add to our selection here. And then this time I'm going to just create a lasso selection really close to his legs. So now it's easy for Photoshop to tell exactly where the edge is. And now look how much better that is compared to what we did with the rectangle mode. So just continuing on here, holding the shift key to add to a selection or the alt key to remove from a selection. The lasso option just gives you so much more control to really isolate the edges that you're looking for. That way it's easy for Photoshop to tell what edges you want and which edges you don't because there's not so much area to deal with like you have to have when you're using the rectangle mode. And then just like before for his arm, we want to subtract from that selection. This time we can hold the alter option key and just keep our lasso selection really tight around the triangle of his arm there. And then that will make a bit of a cleaner selection than what we got with the rectangle mode. Okay, so now things are looking pretty good. Let's go and cut out our image, remove our background just by 
pressing the layer mask icon with our image selected, and now our background has been removed, all thanks to the object selection tool and the lasso mode. So as you can see, this tool is really helpful for making quick selections and snapping to edges in your photo. Using the rectangle or the lasso mode, you have a lot of variety of what types of things you can select to allow Photoshop a little bit of an easier time to find the edges you're looking for. I like to go back and forth between each of these modes just because they each offer something a little bit different. So. When I start things off, I usually use the rectangle mode just to get a general selection. And then I'll go in and use the lasso mode just to refine all the little edges, just so that my selection area isn't as large, making it easier for Photoshop to find the edge that I want to cut out. Now, this is just one of many easy ways that you can cut out photos in Photoshop. And I share three of the easiest ways you can cut out images in another video that I'll leave up in the corner right now. This video will share some other amazing ways to cut out photos really easily, including a one click method that takes away all of the work that you commonly have to do in this program. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link for it below as well. Anyways, if you enjoy Photoshop, photo editing, and Lightroom, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with weekly tutorials just like today so we can hang out, learn new things together, and just have fun editing photos. Anyways, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.